Juice Wall Productions. How's it going, guys? This is Johnny from Juice Wall Productions. So today is a special day. It is August 21st, 2017. There's a nice eclipse going on actually right now as we speak. So I thought it might be appropriate to review the IPV Eclipse. It's a great little device. I've been using mine for a little while. So they work well. They are powered by the Yihi SX420 chip and it's a great device so far. So we're going to go down, get, get to know this guy, get intimate with it. Oh, I don't know why it's a guy, but anyway, you know, whatever. Suit your fancy. So let's go take a look at it. Alright guys, here we are with the box. So it's gonna say IPV Eclipse right there. Gonna have all the specs. Have the black and silver, that is the color. Standard packaging comes with the IPV Eclipse mod, user manual, one USB cable, and a warranty card. We got the IPS screen display on there the mini USB charging, dual 18650 batteries not included but still great so pop this box open, nice pretty basic black box first off we have our user manual which we will go over a little bit, not gonna really uh, be looking at this too much it's only about uh, nine pages of actual information on there I noticed on my booklet anyway on page seven that you can't really tell yeah you can kind of tell I actually glued over um, something that they previously had on there and you can see kind of underneath it I can anyway you might not be able to see it under under the camera but there's definitely another page and they just look like they uh, fucked something up and glued over it so uh, past that we have our warranty card and then our device underneath that we're gonna have a micro USB um, I already have mine out ready to go so we're not really gonna take this one out no necessary uh, no need for that I should say alright so get that out of the way so let's see we have a nice fire bar we have a very very nice display I have a picture of my wife and I on there so I should probably change that so three clicks is going to lock it which is going to take us into our clock mine is set for standard mountain time so it's uh, 1251 here so one two three four five is going to bring us into our menu might as well uh, just start from the uh, top so system how to turn the system wow hello really doesn't want to show up it's just super bright let me see if I can turn the brightness down see if that'll help out yeah that helps a little bit alright cool so we're gonna go up we have system off that's how you're gonna turn the device off and or leave it on leave that on next we have the font select I currently have it on font 2 because I like it it's a little more bubbly a little easier to read so we'll select that, we'll exit. So that is the font there, a little more bubbly. So, alrighty. Next one, if this thing wants to work, hello. Oh, let's turn this brightness all the way down. See if that does anything for us. I helped out a little bit. Hey, I can see myself. Solid. <laughs> all right. So next, we're going to font select. We'll go to one. Show you how that looks. Alright, so it's just more basic, you know, a little more sticky, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's a word or used in the right context, but one, two, three, four, five. Alright, so, on select, I want to set that back to two just because I like it more. So the way I am navigating this, we have this, which is the up, and this, which is the down. So once you get to the exit, it's going to round robin. Once you get up to system, press up, it's going to round robin so next is adjust temperature so that is going to be your adjustment for temperature control in celsius and or fahrenheit we have the adjust unit which is going to be your adjustment for nickel stainless steel or titanium select coil is basically selecting what coil you have for a tank and then we have our settings for tcr so this is not going to identify and we're not going to be able to adjust this until we actually have a coil set for tcr all right, next is the standby time, which I have set to 30 seconds, which is default. Basically, that's how long my screen is going to stay on. All right, time set, which is, you know, the time, the date, the month, the year, all that good stuff, all set. And then we have the wallpaper select. I have downloaded a few cool backgrounds for the horde. Um, these come standard with 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
Alright, so the 6, 7, and 8 are something that I've downloaded myself. And, uh, yeah. So then we have... Oh, I guess it's not standard. Maybe it is. So you have the option... Um, I'll, I'll include a link to the video that I used to help me get the custom wallpapers and the application to use for that. Um, and I'll link that down in the description because it was... It's not like a pain in the ass, it's just, you know, finding the, the website and stuff, and they'll help you do that. Um, other than that, it's just like upgrading any firmware on any device, basically. So, alrighty. Next things we have to go over. Let's see if I can turn my screen up for this. Let's see if it'll work. Usually around about 5. Alright, so, there is 10. We're at 0 right now. So, 0 brightness. Oh, well, you know, there's still some. I still see myself. Solid. Alright, so... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 10 is super bright, and it kind of hurts my head. I keep it at the standard set 5, which is really, really fucking bright as is anyway. It's really too bright for the camera to see. Uh, 1 is going to work. We're going to keep it on 1. We're going to exit that. So, in the top left corner there, we have our ohms. I'm sitting at 0 0.14 ohms. We have our voltage directly under that, which we're sitting at 3.34 volts our wattage, we have our battery up in the top right corner and then for our wattage so as you can see right there I have pressed a button I've pressed our up button which is changing our memory mode so we have memory 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 back to 1 we are in standard mode at 100 degrees celsius which um, is just kind of, uh, kind of weird to me so I'm setting with the down button setting the the uh, the ramp up basically of the device so we'll start at the beginning at soft I usually run this as standard this is gonna stay red until we hit our fire bar powerful and then powered so this SXIQS1 is essentially you adjust 0 seconds to 10 seconds in whatever so let's say at 0.5 seconds I wanted to go 24 watts right and then at one second I wanted to go to 30 watts and then at um, one and a half seconds I wanted to go to 50 watts so so on and so forth I can set from 0 seconds or 0.5 seconds sorry upwards to 10 seconds and I can adjust that to what works best for me I don't really fuck with it I honestly just keep it at the 80 watts on standard and that t typically works best for me well for this build I should say Alright, so from there, like I said, I like to sit in standard. Um, standard is nice. It's kind of in the middle, I would say, um, between, you know, obviously between soft and powered, and then there's, or powerful, and then there's powered. Damn it, camera, focus. Do your job. Alright, so powered is ridiculous. The ramp up rating on it is high as fuck. Even at 80 watts, it produces very, very high. It's great. It's basically like hitting hitting these coils at like 120 watts but you know it's not it's different it's weird there's no real way to explain it except for it's just the ramp up um, setting so set that back to standard so how I turn my wattage up is I click what I want to be on and then I adjust that so we use the middle button to enter and then we turn them up with the wattage up and or the wattage down button or plus and minus because it's used for temperature as well so alright so it's going to set memory mode. We can adjust that. We already did this. There we go. So 80 joules. And we can set our temperature in Celsius and or Fahrenheit. So we're going to go up in increments of one. And we, we're going to be able to go all the way up to 300 degrees Celsius. For 100 degrees Celsius. Past that. Um, our wattage mode, we can go up. We're going up in increments of 0.1. Past 100, it's going to go up in increments of 1, upwards to 200 watts. Very quickly. Very, very fast. Let's see how many times it takes me to get back to my 80 watts. Alright, so. Back to 80. If you go too fast, it'll just go to fucking... Just like that. Alright. Click, set, and it's ready to go. So, you can see the battery fluctuation there. It's just adjusting to what I'm running at. Um, you could always adjust these memory one, memory two, or you can adjust everything you want to it. So right now on memory one, if I wanted to set that to 95 watts, I could switch over to memory two and set that back to 40 watts. Um, everything you adjust with memory mode is going to stay 
as you set it. So that's really about it for that. Pass that. The jewels are adjusted in point ones as well. So anyone who likes to use jewels or temperature control, that's going to work for you. Very nice device. Very easy to use, in my opinion. Uh, not too much about it. Um, the TCR setting is very easy to use. Uh, the menu, easy to get into, easy to lock it. It's nice because it has a clock on it, so I don't have to wear my watch anyway. So, um, future. Yeah. I need to go over the battery door as well, which is nice. And I don't actually have the specs, the height, the width, the diameter of the device on hand. But I'll try to find that before the end of the video. Alright, so we have our micro USB charging port and port for upgradable firmware and the uh, display settings and whatever. Uh, this is a nice carbon fiber sticker on here as well as on the front as you can see. Uh, these come in multiple colors. This one is black and the stainless. They come in like orange, yellow, red, blue, some other ones as well. Um, they're pretty st set standard um, for the 510. Very nice 510. Grab a screwdriver after I take my batteries out. So for the battery door, all I gotta do is push up. It's gonna pop open. It's not spring loaded. It feels kind of janky, but it stays in very, very well. So we have the uh, wattage up, or not wattage up. We have the positive and the negative. Those guys are nice set in place. You can see down in there. And then, yeah, just push this up. We have this little clamp right here that's going to clamp onto that. And when we put the batteries in, it's going to push into the springs and going to hold it in very nicely. So push and down. Let's make some noise without the batteries in there, as well as it's just going to open without the batteries in there. But once we have that, those batteries in there and it's closed, then it works just fine. So, got some juice on mine. Very, very nice adjustable pin. So, that's good. Spring loaded. And, yeah, just a good diameter. Fits really well in the hand. I, ha I like to put my thumb this way, but I can hold it this way as well. But because it is a, I would say, a right-handed device, more or less, um, this is how I would hold it, or like this. But I usually find myself holding it like this and hitting it with these two fingers. But you can also hit it down here with, basically hit it anywhere, from top to bottom. So, all right, let's throw the batteries back in there. So we got negative, and we got the positive. And you push in, push in. So, once we're in there, this isn't going to make noise or anything like that, and it's going to stay on there perfecto. Alright, so, one, two, three, four, five to turn it on. It's going to display everything we need to know, powered by the Yihi SX420 chip, which is just a really, really good chip. Very customizable, very easy to use. Uh, one of the better chips, I think, on the market currently. But... Alright guys, I think that's about it. We're going to go up top. We're going to talk about it a little more. I want to go over the one thing that I dislike about it. But yeah, just a really nice screen. Very easy to use. Uh, just put my device on, or my uh, RDTA on there, and it's not registering it until I hit that button. It's going to re-register immediately. It's going to figure out, you know, what I had it at prior to. So, alright guys, let's take it back up top. Alright guys, that was up close and personal with the what can I think? The IPV Eclipse, powered by the Yihi SX420 chip. Um, as you saw, very sleek design, nice carbon fiber on the back. We went over the screen and everything, just very nice little screen. Super customizable, which is great. Simple, for the most part, a little more intermediate than some other devices that are out there, but um, I love it so far. The only con, like I said, is the buttons. If you can hear that. That drives me bonkers but I'm usually not shaking my device around, so it doesn't happen when I'm just using it. It just happens when I shake it. So, other than that, guys, yeah, great little device, great display. I like the fire bar, like I said. Just an all-around good device. So, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, let me know down in the comments. Um, we can do some more reviews. We have a very big, big uh, couple videos planned for the future, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and remember, change tastes good, join the revolution.